Maybe it was fine with all that stuff stuck there. Oh my god. Well, apparently we got it dry enough that it stuck down pretty far and good. I can't believe whoever put that on there didn't seal it properly. Right? We have sunlight. Oh yeah, we do. <gasps> we got sunlight. In Washington? In Washington. Twilight light. <laughs> Look at that. That's it's, a joke. Stuff just comes right off. It's almost like they put like a a caulking for like countertops or something on it. It's kind of what it seems like is a yeah countertops or bathroom. Hey, maybe Coffee. he did a quick fix when he was remodeling his kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Like right before we purchased it. Or rather like right before we put it up for sale. Yeah. See this, that's really thick up here. This is that goop that I put on when, I, when we first got the goop. Oh yeah. And that stuff's holding pretty darn good. Yeah, but, but I didn't put enough on. What? Rusted? Stripped. No threads. <laughs> That's awesome. Who strips those kind of screws? But no, that's pretty good. Not good enough if there's water getting through. Yep. So it feels like you're stuck in the bucket. Stuck it with caulking. Look at that, that's all caulking. That's great. Hey look, there's the inside of our home. Should we show everyone? We'll show everyone our inside, our home. So you can see, he's just stuck it on with caulking. Whoever uh, did this last, we've got the insulation, the wall. I think we're okay. I don't think we have too much damage. I think we can survive that. Hey, hon. Got it. Apparently, uh, there's one on one side here to hold this flap down. There should be another one on this side, but there's not. Oh, that must be the hole it's that broken. I was seeing from the inside. Yeah. Yep. Right there. Nice. So when we put this on, we'll actually put caulking in there because water does get up underneath this thing. That could cause water to come inside. I mean, it wouldn't be much, but. Any water is too much. Like a painter's uh, scraper, a little five in one, or a seven in one scraper, instead of your knife. But I have no idea where my scraper is. So we're just gonna go like this. Oh, look at that. See you coming right through. Hee <laughs> hee, bye. <laughs> uh, coarse or not as coarse? 
Uh, of course, would give some bite. Hold on. I need that chamois though. We are getting wet in here. <laughs> scuffed up surface. Now we need oh the butyl. Okay. It doesn't matter if it goes over the holes. No, it's actually good to have the butyl go over the holes because you're drilling through the holes. So you want the butyl to be right over the holes where your screws are going. Mm. And you can even overlap a little bit. So for the screws, it's almost like using Loctite on piping? Yeah. Tearing it off right there at the edge, and then pull, peeling it back a little ways so I can overlap with the other butyl. Now this is what the person before us did not do, and make sure that you get this on here. What's the consistency of that stuff, honey? It uh, kind of feels like uh, silly putty. That's what I was thinking it looked like. Uh, chewed up gum. Yeah. <laughs> Here, the last piece. Does this stuff dry out on its own? This stuff should actually stay pretty soft for quite some time. And uh, it's actually meant to prevent water from reaching areas that water shouldn't be at. So, for example, if you have a car with a spoiler and you take the spoiler off, when the spoiler goes back on the vehicle, it has a couple, you know, usually two to three screws on each side of the spoiler. And you actually put butyl around the screws mm. so that uh, water won't seep in underneath the, uh, the spoiler and leak water into the trunk. Mm. So, thank you, my love. You can see the butyl on here on the edges. You want to try and make sure that it stays right there on the edge. Don't let it fall too far inward. Make sure you get it pushed down in place. But we're going to cinch it down anyways. And then we're going to put caulking around this once we get this put on the RV. And that'll help water tight everything. As long as you can find put the screws in your pocket right. line up your holes not gonna be easy to do when you can't see through them uh, you can see you can get it really close and close is good enough because then it'll hold and, and usually you want to get new screws the problem is, is that we were unable to do that 
Oh, unfortunately, we have to use the same screws. Well, we have all the material, so if we need to. If we need to redo it later, we can. Right. See, so you can. Some of the butyl will squeeze out a little bit. I figured that's probably a good thing that shows that it's there. Shows that it's there, shows that it's making that area watertight. So is there a reason why you're doing the four corners before any of the other ones? Just making sure it's even or? Yeah, uh, you either start from the center and work your way out, or you start out. You, you basically want to go in a, a, a pattern of a star, like you're putting on a tire. So everything goes on as even as possible. That's the stripped one, right? That's the bad one. Okay. So you notice I went from here, there, 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 right? Mm -hmm. I'm going here and then up here. Four screws left. I want to see what kind of screws we got. It looks like all of our screws are good here, which is nice. Pushing it back in, kind of making it flush. Just because I'm kind of OCD like that. You definitely don't want to over tighten these. Because it's plastic? It's plastic. You can crack the plastic. You can strip out the screw. Right there, we should actually be watertight, right? But we're not gonna stop there. All right. So on the caulking, there's actually little hash marks. If you can see those. You wanna cut this at an angle just like that so that when you lay your bead down around the perimeter, it's nice and smooth. See, I would've made the mistake of not cutting it off at an angle. Oh uh, yeah, lots of people do. out this tool actually pokes the hole into the caulking gun so that the caulking will come out line it up with the way that you are comfortable with Been a while. Well, we're also trying to do this fast, so before the rain comes in. Right. We're supposed to be getting rain here pretty much all day. Yeah. So, so. a break in rain in Washington during this time of the year is actually not as easy to come by as you think. Yeah. At least not on the coast. Pacific Northwest, we got a rainforest for a reason. <laughs> that is true. Speaking of, maybe we should take a trip out there and show everybody. Where to? The Olympic Rainforest. The Olympic Rainforest. That could be a fun trip right there. Yeah, I've been living in Washington for how long and I've still not been out there. Really? Uh-uh. I haven't been out there since I was a kid. thing better safe than sorry putting it around the screw heads uh, 
that's not going to be a clean job, that's for sure. There is a way to clean this up, and I will get to that here in a moment. what happens when you're in a hurry and you've only got about five or ten minutes to, to water tight your leak right. now it looked like there needed to be a little bit more up top time than we really have actually how, uh, mm. how it holds up cool. as a quick fix it ain't the prettiest but I'll tell you what it ain't gonna leak right now um, we do however still have one more thing to do and that is to go inside and fix that and fill in the gaps all right, so now that the outside is is uh, watertight, we can see that the inside still has this gap right here down at the bottom and up here at the top. So what we're gonna do is use some gaps and cracks. Great stuff. Insulating foam sealing. We are going to make sure that this thing stays dry. So shake vigorously for 60 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and shake this. So we're just going to start on one side and work our way around. Okay, if it oozes out. Because you can always get rid of that later. All right. You know what? I think it feels warmer in here already. So we have a little bit of overspill there, as you can see. That is okay. We're just gonna wipe this off. No gaps. I'll actually get you right up in there. See? Right here. So you can see there is absolutely no gaps in there anymore. You can see that little hole right there. That's that caulking coming through. So we'll go ahead and fill that hole with the caulking, push it up in there. Now we literally have no breaches whatsoever. And that's the way it should be. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. All right, hon, what do you think? Are we done? on that note that's the end of this video and that is how you watertight your uh, stove fan vent vent did I just say that multiple times I think I did yeah yeah all right well I guess this video is over you guys have a great day we have some cleaning up and some reinstalling to do <laughs> take care